All right guys, so I made this render and somebody on Instagram had commented. He was like, hey, I tried to create renders using Octane's with 500 samples. GI set to 10, Fireflies or Firefly set to, I don't know what he means by that one, but Firefly set to 0 0.05. Still, the renders, the, the results are way noisy. Uh, how to render with low samples without noise? That's a great question. And then it looks like we had a follow up here. Did you get a reply? You got replies? Uh, I haven't. Well, I'm gonna give you that reply right now. Let's jump into my Blender file and take a look at my settings. All right, guys, here is the file that I have set up for this here. If I go ahead and fire up the viewport render right now, and you can see here, it's pretty much the same thing. One thing that I, I like to do is I like to actually change the default settings. I tweak them a little bit more to my liking. And again, they're a little bit high, but so let me quickly show you my render time for something like this. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and render a frame right now and show you guys how long it was taking for that to be rendered. Okay, the render is finished. It took 30 seconds, 30.49 seconds on my 4080 Supra. I'm using a 4080 Supra NVIDIA RTX uh, GPU, okay? So, I mean, but his main complaint was about the noise and like, this is, a fairly clean render as far as I'm concerned. It's really clean. Let's look at the render settings here on the side here. Here are my render settings. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for you guys there. So I am using the path. Uh, I'm using the path tracing kernel. I had a max samples of 800. Viewport was set to 250. Diffuse was set to 8. Speckler was set to 12, which I probably could have bumped that up, but I preferred I just kept it a little below. Uh, scattering set to 8. And then um, these, this is pretty much overlapping. I leave that at default. My Ray Espelon was at default. This was at default. And we scroll down some more. Here is my Caustic Blur default. My GI Clamp was also set to 10, okay? And then everything else is pretty much default. If we go down to my adaptive sampling, I was using adaptive sampling. These were my settings, 0 0.02 threshold. Adaptive sampling kicks in at 500 samples. So that was my samples my setups, and then I also was using motion blur. Now, if we also take a look at my denoising setup, I was using denoising in this image here. We go back over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the render, press in on my keyboard, and you can see here I am using the denoiser. I am using Blender Octane standalone version 4.21. It's not the most updated one, but it's the last one that I updated to. And here I have the option to change my denoiser from Octane AI denoiser or to Open Image denoiser, which is a little bit faster. So I choose the Open Dim Image denoiser and I have my settings set to one to one and then blend is to 0%. Also on the back end, I do have a little bit of setup going on in the compositing section. If I go into compositor and you can see here, this is my compositing setup, but in this case, I did not use it. So sometimes I do have this render and it goes into an optics denoiser or, you know, the standard one for blender oct or for blender cycles, um, but it's muted. And then I got it over. It's all muted. So I'm not using any of this stuff here. So I'm basically just using the standard denoiser, AI denoiser from, um, I guess, blender. But now it's implemented into the octane render engine here. As you can, as you can see here, I'm not using the uh, Octane AI denoiser, all right? So that's pretty much the settings that I've used. So the one thing that I can definitely recommend if you're still getting a lot of noise is, is it's your lights. You really need to pay attention to how many lights you have in your, in your scene. Make sure your lights are not being blocked, uh, especially I noticed within Octane, if lights are being blocked by something, that will definitely crank up the noise. Uh, there is, uh, something that I did find back in the days when I first was studying. Let me see if I can look that up for you guys. All right, so if I jump into my Blender Octane School community, there is something that I've saved in here for this reason. And if you come into the classroom section, and if we come over here to Octane YouTube, right? Here we have the Octane Bible. And this is by Scott Benson. And it's a website, it's, it's his Behance site, which I, I've learned so much. Now this is for Octane Cinema 4D. But I just re I use this to reverse engineer things for a Blender Octane because it's still the Octane render engine, right? And if I find the section about lights here, 
There was a section in here that, that talks about basically how to, how to get a cleaner render. And one thing that he talks about here, uh, very bad things to do when you're inside of Octane, when you're using Octane. And this works for Cycles. I mean, this works for Octane and this also works for Cinema 4D because you're still using it. And I would probably say these probably would help you even if you're using Cycles. Very bad things, you know, how can we help this, you know, to optimize and get cleaner renders? Very bad things working at improper scales okay that was the first thing making sure normals are proper and then unre for here's a little bit more details but unrealistic glass iors and dispersion realistic uh, realistic glass but one thing here working at real world scale really helps us to get our lights and you know get things in check check your normals again realistic materials try to keep in realistic values and your lights here also there's a couple of other things, but check it out right here. Placement and blocking the hard, a hard and fast rule we need firmly implemented in our heads is that we want to avoid blocking or obscuring as many lights rays as possible, uh, especially the most powerful ones. Instead, we make a mask or control the distribution or move our, our fixtures around so they are emitted outwards and and as an un obtrusive or unextruded or basically not blocked as possible so when you're doing renders like in your viewport try to make sure they're not being blocked by something i mean it, it, you, if you have something in front of the light yeah but that's one reason why i think this is it's only really one light it's one light here on the side if we go back into the actual render here and we look let me just kill the render for a moment this is the light it's just one light and it's not being blocked basically by anything. I do have this cube, but it's a particle. It's a particle system. So that is not really like any type of geometry. And then this outer cube here is again, um, some more atmosphere, but it's inside the box. So, and then these also have transparent uh, materials on them. So they're, again, they're not really blocking any light rays going to it. So those will be some of the tips that I will definitely take a look into because I've come across files that people have sent me and like, you know, they just put a light there and then they just build their scene and they've got something kind of halfway blocking it. And that definitely uh, will affect and dictate how much noise you would get. Especially, I, I, I've i learned this from the guys in my community who do like architectural visuals. Like they're very meticulous about where they put lights inside their scene when you're building a room. Like they don't put the light right up against the wall so it's like because you got to put it off the wall enough where it's not being it's not blocking any rays don't stick stuff in the corner of the wall push it away where it's it's got a nice good clearance and there's probably another file that i actually saw that was that shows examples of this yes right here again placement and noise check this out he's taking a light here and he's put them tucked them right up in the corners here zero centimeters from the corners two lights look how much noise it was generated in that render right again 10 centimeters from the corner. Now he pulls them away, a little bit less noise. 25 centimeters from the corner, 50 centimeters from the corner. Look at the difference in, in the render right there, okay? So again, this is right here, 10 centimeter radius, 10 centimeter radius spheres, lights with 64 samples, okay? So this is a prime example of making sure you're giving their, your lights their, their space that is, that's needed. This is Octane. Now, I don't know, I have not tried this with cycles, but again, I stress this when people who want to use Octane, Octane is a little bit more advanced. It's heavily built off of real, uh, real world specs and, spe and the things with rendering and like all this wizardry going on. And I do know you cannot be as, I would say, sloppy or things like this where the light placement, you can't be that sloppy in Octane like you can in, in cycles, right? So you got to take note of that. And that's why people kind of in the beginning don't understand what they're dealing with when they get into Octane. Octane ain't no joke. I say again, you know, Cycles is a good render. It's cool, but it's like a little Cessna plane. It's great for beginners. It's great for people who want to start learning. But if you want more, if you want more, you want more options, you want more detail, stuff like that. It's like a 747 jumbo jet. There's switches and dials everywhere in the cockpit. That is my analogy from going from Cycles to Octane. Do you always need to fly a 747 jumbo jet if you're just going to take a 20 minute flight? No, you just hop in the Cessna and just go up and down and you land, right? You know, it just really depends on your needs and what you want. 
I prefer cycle. I mean, I prefer octane. I like it. I don't hate on cycles. I still use cycles, you know, and sometimes I even use Eevee just because if I'm ridden or not something really quick, I don't have to commit to nothing because all three of those engines are free. I just go to my blender and choose the one I want to use for that project. Plain and simple. I'm done. If you guys like this, you guys want more content like this, check out my Blender Octane community. Uh, I'll give you a seven day free trial. Links down in the description. If you can't afford that, go to the Discord. It's free. Go to Gumroad. Lots of free resources there. Or just go to my YouTube channel and download my Blender 101 Octane guide. It's free. I'm out. Peace.